Hello and welcome back to Shelf Centered. This is Bryce. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please like and subscribe if this is something that you may end up liking. Who knows? You might. This is my semi-weekly opportunity to discuss the news as it relates to science fiction and fantasy, sometimes horror in books and media. We've got a pretty equal amount this time. Usually I tend to weigh on the side of more news on books, but here we are today. So let's just jump into the book. First things first, the Threadlight Omnibus. There's going to be a Kickstarter that might be by the time I get this video up, but I don't think it's up yet. You'll have time regardless to get involved with it. Threadlight is a series, a trilogy by Zach Argyle. I've read book one, Voice of War, and it was excellent. It is self-published, but now it's getting the Kickstarter treatment with a beautiful omnibus. Uh, it just from, I mean, what I've seen so far, you better believe I want to check this out. I loved book one. I have the next couple books on audiobook, and so I'm very excited to check those out. I call it, it's called Threadlight. I call it Stormlight Light. It's kind of like got the same kind of feel uh, in Stormlight being Stormlight Archive from Brandon Sanderson. Uh, so anyway, it, which are good things for me. I love Stormlight Archive and I love Threadlight. So this is, this is, <laughs> I love all things with light in them, clearly. This is exciting. It looks cool. I just, man, I'm, I'm a sucker for a beautiful looking book. Look, there's my tress right there. All right, then we've got in self-published news, continuing on with that, uh, Luke Schultz, King's Radiance, has got a sequel with the title. We don't have a cover yet, but we have a title. That title is The Sun Prince, so that's exciting news. Definitely go subscribe to get Luke's emails. Uh, you'll get lots of good news like this. And anyway, just a good guy to follow on Twitter, on all the places, on the Instagrams. And uh, check out Luke Schultz. Great stuff. And I'm excited to see uh, the success and that he's, he's, he's continuing forward. There have been a couple updates since the Wired article on Brandon Sanderson. I wanted to just kind of note a couple things. Esquire, you probably noticed, had kind of a follow-up uh, article that they put out. I thought it was interesting that I think they did their article in all of a couple days. And it took the mean-spirited, just, just terrible article from Wired months to get this article done. Uh, anyway, Brandon Sanderson seems to just bend over backwards for people who want to do articles on him, for promotion, for all kinds of things. He's bending over backwards for people, even though anything that I read or see about him is like, He's booked from like sun up to sundown, and I don't even know when he's actually writing. Who knows? I, I enjoyed that article a lot more, and um, I mean, and, and you could even criticize to say, it, look, it wasn't even critical enough. It, it was kind of more of a puff piece, uh, but it was at least, it was kind of funny that it, it did actually go into the Wired article a little bit. Uh, then Brandon Sanderson not only had a very nice kind of, uh, uh, a good kind of immediate follow-up to the Wired article that he did on Reddit. It was a very kind uh, approach. and But then he did a, 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 an even bigger kind of article. If you haven't checked that out, you definitely should. Uh, and, and it kind of goes into where the Wired article, even the, the, the author was asked not to, to reveal one of the things that he said, and, and the article did. And that would be, where Sanderson, uh, Sanderson literally said, like, I, I don't feel pain, right? And he, and he didn't mean it in, like, a psycho killer way. <laughs> it was, and he goes into detail because he kind of felt like it in this new article that he wrote on his blog uh, about his kind of neuro, neurodivergence and that he doesn't get the highs or the lows of things, but he can be steady, and that's why he can do this kind of crazy schedule that he does to just be schedule or be scheduled, be steady and produce books that people love. And um, which obviously he, he can, he, he can evoke emotion. He knows emotion uh, very well in, in all the things that he, that I've read, there's always some emotional climax. So anyway, I, I thought it was a good just follow up and, and kind of into 
how he works, how his brain works, and again, being open with that because I think that just helps other people be able to be open, to be themselves uh, and to own themselves and kind of go forward into the world and not, not be ashamed in any way. Uh, I just, I like that. And I like that something of his, his caliber, of his success is is being open about that. And I really appreciate that. Even though I, what I don't like is that he kind of felt forced into writing the article. Uh, no one should be outing you, especially when you specifically have asked them not to. Again, if I needed any more reason to dislike the Wired article, well, I got another one. All right, in other news, Book Depository is shutting down. Book Depository has been a really good place for being able to ship all over the world. I like, I've done giveaways through this, literally this channel, through Book Depository because then I can say instead of US only because of shipping costs, I can say anywhere in the world that Book Depository gets to, which is 99% of the places, I think, which is a lot of places. So, I. Uh, it's it said I know they're an Amazon company and like blah 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 there but it was nice to have that like free shipping anywhere and obviously it inflated the prices of books but I was willing to pay it to be able to make a giveaway for everyone now am I part of the problem have I used them other than the couple of, of giveaways I've done no <laughs> I'm, I'm, I can be considered part of the reason they're closing sure <laughs> Uh, but anyway, it's sad news. I think there's some alternatives, but it's not a ton. All right, in the latest Twitter drama, someone going around, like, pushing everybody's buttons. And I don't think there's, uh, you know, an, an intent to, like, go viral or anything with this, but maybe there was. Uh, but here's the opinion that I think is wrong, but hey, I'm willing to say, look, this is good. It got a good discussion going. Lots of opinions out there. But here is the opinion that was expressed that I disagree with, at least. And the fact, and, the, and it is a little navel-gazy for me. Uh, it's about booktubers, bloggers, anyone reviewing a book. And the, essentially, the, the person posited that if an ARC, an advanced reading copy, and I think they probably mean any review copy, I interchange them too, but any review copy, let's say, to be, to be charitable, if they've given, if an author has given you a review copy or an ARC that you have an obligation as the reviewer, whatever form that takes, that you have an obligation to actually review that book. And the thing is, I heartily disagree. One, I think just in practice, it's never been that way. Uh, I, I would like to, I think it would be fair in a fair world. And, but, but the levels that, that this, this, the, the, the person went to to say, you know, it's, it may be legally okay, but morally it's, it's not okay. I, the thing is, it's, it is what it is. One, this is not my job, right? I've gotten over the years and when I was blogging and now so many advanced reading copies or review copies that there's just not even time in the world to get to them all. Now this is going to look again a little like I'm looking at a gift horse in the mouth, but the thing is I've actually gotten to a point where I just, one, I don't promise ever to do a review. I always give someone, if they're asking, I will give them the, I will, I will say, I will feature it on your book on a book haul. I'm happy to do that, but I make no promises as to review because I want my TBR to be my own. I have enough books that I buy on my own. Are you kidding me? I have enough of a TBR that's large enough uh, to, I've already had to come to this realization, the first stage is acceptance, right? That I'm not even gonna be able to read all the books that I own in my whole lifetime. How, you know, just you got to be realistic about these things, says Mr. Nine Fingers. So, <laughs> I being realistic about this, being a passion that I don't want to kill or beat into the ground, and I more power to people that can do this. And if someone does say, I will give this to you only for a an honest review, hey, then you've got an obligation there, absolutely. But other than that. Uh, frankly, most of them are Kindle, and that's free to them really to send out. It's an email. It's their time to send it out. They may not get that sale, but were they going to get the sale anyway? 
you know it's kind of a marketing budget kind of a decision again I try to be very clear with people that hey I make zero promises so I think that's that's what I've kind of learned is that's the best that I can do is set the expectations at the right level <laughs> that hey I I cannot I just cannot make promises because then we I just disappoint everybody that's not fair but I still regardless of like I feel like that's the kind you know human thing to do to authors is to say is to just give that expectation and, and be clear with where I'm coming from um, but even if they didn't even if that wasn't there 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 just isn't an obligation even morally to read every single book that comes in it's just we get a lot we get a lot of stuff we get a lot of requests it's it's like it's quite constant i even put on my goodreads like look i, I love you i <laughs> i just can't make this can't become a job is not my job i you know i'm not an editor here <laughs> i'm not going through the slush pile or anything like that i cannot make this a job it's a bad idea but but regardless i don't think that expectation is just ever even there again unless someone actually says the words hey I'll give this to you for an honest review there it is uh, <laughs> anyway get off my soapbox there I'm always on a soapbox lately what are your thoughts on that if I get re if I get advanced reading copies or review copies should I be reviewing do I have an obligation uh, to review those I already I want to review I mean I've literally read a bunch that I still haven't even gotten to <laughs> actually reviewing I will I'm going to <laughs> but those again are my own priority my own me that's on me that I want to get those out and again I made no promises to any of the authors so anyway let me know your thoughts love to know it and I still I think even featuring in a book haul, book hauls tend to do better than dedicated reviews because dedicated reviews, as you've heard from probably everyone from Daniel Green to Murphy, like they just don't do as well as other videos. They just frankly don't as far as views, and I think I think they're valuable. All right, let's talk about some media. I know it's a little bit older news now, but I, I had to talk about it, give my two cents. Harry Potter getting a, a series on HBO. You know, it's just like, here's the thing, and I was frustrated, I love Spider-Man, but when when Spider-Man got rebooted a ton of times in a matter of 10 years, it was like, what, this has got to be, you got to be kidding me, this can't be a thing that we're doing now. But apparently it is, uh, Harry Potter is uh, getting another reboot, it's only been about 10 years, maybe upwards of 11 or 12, why we need another one this soon, I don't know. It's like, it's not even long enough to be, nobody can be nostalgic for it. We've, we were all around when it was happening, I guess if you're, if you're old enough to care anyway. I, it's just, it's like, it doesn't even make any sense to me. I like, I, I saw the idea floated that I, I really like. I liked, why don't we take, you know, bad movies that, that could have been good just on the, the, the plot or anything like that, or the writing, and make them good or something like that you know I don't know like let's try something different if that's really what we need to do but no we all know if we've, we've taught Hollywood that we just we love our nostalgia and we love just reboot all the things that's all we do and we will go check it out couple bits of Star Wars why Star Wars I'm just getting Star Wars out I haven't even watched the new Mandalorian season and I keep saying kind of bad things about it so let me know if I should be watching it I am just a little worn out it's just constant Star Wars lately and it's uh, we've beaten that dead horse I feel like but but having said that the new Ahsoka series looks awesome the new trailer looks great so at least there's that and then almost immediately we hear about news of a new Star Wars is a trilogy or at least a movie of it's kind of centering around Rey Rey from the new movies uh, episodes 7, 8, and 9 that Rey is getting another movie why why can't we I mean didn't we all kind of agree I thought at least the internet seemed to agree that we're just gonna ignore those last movies let's not make them canon I know <laughs> what we can do is make Ahsoka canon that looks good that's gonna have Thrawn in it it sounds like and Thrawn is amazing and he's from if you haven't read the Thrawn trilogy you should uh, Timothy's on so uh, anyway but so that looks cool let's again let's take 
all of the stories in the expanded universe of Star Wars books that are out there that we made non-canon for some reason. And hey, like, let's just draw from them and make movies from them. The ones that worked. The ones that didn't work. Hey, look at that. Don't have to go make anything off of them. At least do that much, right? Why are we making these random new ones? So many people were frustrated with this new trilogy. I just don't get it, but here we are. Star Wars will Star Wars and we'll keep Star Wars in forever, I guess. But in good news, I've got a couple of extra movies, a couple of movies that I'm very excited for. Okay, new Wes Anderson movie. I get it featured on here because it looks a little sci-fi and that would be Asteroid City. I mean, look at the cast lineup. Look at how ridiculous it looks as usual because it's Wes Anderson. If you haven't watched Fantastic Mr. Fox, that is like one of the best movies and I think a great way to get introduced to Wes Anderson and Grand Budapest Hotel. I mean, I just, anyway, the list could like watch them all. They're amazing. If you, if you haven't already, but look at Asteroid City. I'm so excited. That's gonna be great. And then if you haven't seen already, the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's got a trailer now. The first movie was amazing. It was so good, so well done. This is one that, and at least it's, it was already kind of, when they did the first movie, they were already planning on a second one, so I like that. It's not just like, hey, it did well, and it made us money, let's make another one. That's always concerning because, uh, you know, how much is a cash grab versus just an actual good story? That's all we need, right? Uh, speaking of, John Wick apparently is getting a fifth movie maybe uh so if you haven't seen john wick 4 it's amazing it's like, what was one of the articles i read was like artistic violence i it's just it's amazing and um you know i i'm always concerned again that it seems to be like hey there's a mixture of like, are they done? Are they going to be done? Are they going to be going? Uh, is it really warranted? It seems like they were kind of planning on it with, uh, with the fourth movie. Uh, anyway, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm trying to shut up with that. Anyway, just more John Wick. I can't say I would not go watch and love. So, so far, I've been amazed that they just, I, I walk out and I go, how is it still at, the, at this level, right? I think the third one was the only one I was like... Not 100% like this is better than the others, but I still really enjoyed it and it was still like maybe slightly below the others. Ooh, the fourth one, is it my favorite now? It might be. <laughs> All right, then we're getting a Shrek 5. Hey, another good movie. This, um, I think Shrek has one, it's, it's one where they can keep, uh, that's one that, where, well, it's like they're not, you can't really beat a dead horse with that. There's always stuff to poke fun of in fairy tales. There's so many fairy tales out there. Uh, and that's, you know, Shrek is just essentially a parody of them. And I think that's great. So that's one that makes sense to keep going on. Uh, Puss in Boots has clearly done well. That's a spinoff from Shrek. And the newest one I hear is amazing. My kids all loved it. Uh, they love anything that involves a scream typically, though. So I can't trust them 100%. But... Um, but they really did like it. So anyway, that's that's the news. This is the news to me uh, for this week. Let me know your thoughts. What did I miss? What else is out there? If you could please like and subscribe. It helps out the channel tremendously. And we will catch you later. Thank you. Bye.